Hey, what's up everyone? Bennett Profixer, and today on the channel, I have a swimming pool motherboard. Uh, this one in particular converts salt water into chlorine to help purify the pool. Our customer brought this by about two years ago to have us solder a new thermistor onto the logic board there. Um, this particular one has failed once again. They provide us with a new one, which we will be soldering on. Everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and also like this video and comment letting us know what you want to see in the future videos that we'll be releasing. Without further ado, I'm going to take you over to my soldering bench and I'm going to show you how you can replace the thermistor, which is a little bit difficult but simple at the same time, um, with some good soldering equipment. So let's hop on over there and take a look. The first thing that you want to be careful of when working with a board of this level, especially since it's a power board with two massive capacitors on it, is to watch out for shorting anything um, that should not be shorted. Um, you can actually shock yourself pretty bad um, with a board like this one here if you touch something incorrectly with your fingers and short something out. So definitely be very careful and only touch like the edges of the board or places that are not going to be shorting one component with another. These um, capacitors in particular are pretty big and they could give you a really bad shock. Even though they're only 35 volts, you do want to be very careful when working with something like this. Uh, so taking a look at this area here where the thermistor um, connects on, um, you can see it here and it has two large um, metal um, open spots on the board itself. Uh, so we do want to um, heat it up from the back side with our soldering iron. And I'm gonna add a little bit of flux on here and see, you know, just realistically how this um, how this particular part of the board melts. Um, and then we'll see if we need to use our hot air as well. I'm using my Hakko FX888. Uh, this one in particular does have a big chisel tip on it. Um, and so just holding it on there, it looks like yeah, it's melting okay. It's not melting the best. Um, this one over here uh, looks to be about the same. Um, but what we want to do is um, at this point, it looks like it'd be a good idea to um, use our hot air. Um, I do have my hot air set to 385, and it's going to um, help us in heating up the board itself so that the temperature of the board um, is maintained at a higher level. Uh, so I'm gonna take this over here, and I don't have any kind of nozzle on it, and I'm just going to uh, aim it just like this. And now if I touch the board here, you can definitely see that it's heating up more than it was before. And, uh, and hopefully we can, there we go, pull that one out. I'm gonna put that up and now we are going to uh, grab this thermistor which may actually be pretty hot. And we're gonna transfer over these little spacers uh, these little spacers aren't necessary, but they're going to help us keep this away from the motherboard and space it out a little bit easier. So we'll slide that one on there as well, which when they're on the motherboard, they look just like, or when they're on the thermistor, they look uh, just like that there, uh, which is, uh, you know, sensible enough. Now what we could try is we could try to remove some of the solder from this particular board. Um, which shouldn't be too hard. We can go ahead and take some of our uh, braid here. We're going to take some of this uh, Chemtronics rosin wick and we're going to go ahead and wick out these holes just a tiny bit. Uh, this will help us to feed our new uh, thermistor in there. And what we'll do is we're going to just go ahead and take our hot air and heat up this board again and we're just going to kind of hover over those holes this will help us to wick out some of the solder that is in them and hopefully be able to wick out enough that our new thermistor can fit properly in there. Um, which now if you take a look at it, uh, there are two holes directly in the motherboard now and so we could feed this thermistor back up through there. Which just like that, they fit right in there. And so now I'm probably not going to use any kind of hot air. I'm just going to use my, um, just my soldering iron. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and feed back in some solder into those holes. And this is just some leaded solder. 
Um, we're going to go to heat it up from one side. We're going to put a little bit on our soldering iron itself, heat it up from one side, and then we're going to feed it in. Um, these are pretty heavy spots on the board, so you do, um, it may be a little bit difficult to solder because our iron can't really get it hot enough. And that's completely okay. What we're going to do is just feed some solder on there the best that we can. It's going to kind of bubble up and uh, look pretty ugly. But then we're going to bring our hot air in and really let it flow. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to add a little bit of flux onto these particular points on the board itself. And now we're going to bring our hot air back in here once again. Uh, so we're going to heat up just one, touch it with our iron, and this should let it flow really well. We're going to take some of the heat off because we don't want to heat it up too much and have the thermistor fall through. Now we're going to heat up this other pin and heat it up with our iron. And there we go. At this point, it looks like the thermistor is soldered well on there. Um, as far as on the other side of the board, you do want to inspect and make sure that your thermistor is sitting flat, which it completely is. Um, on this side of the board, we do want to snip off our extra leads. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut those off. And this will um, prevent it from sticking out too far and causing any issues with the housing that this particular uh, board sits in. I'm going to go and take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol as well, and we're going to clean that up. All right, you can put a little bit on the board and then also take a Q-tip, and we're going to go ahead and clean up these pads here. Isopropyl alcohol works really, really good because it helps to break down a lot of the um, heated up flux, and it really helps to remove it from the board. You may have to use a couple Q-tips for this particular job just because there's so much... Um, so much flux that is burnt because we did have to use our hot air as well as our iron which does introduce a bit more heat than normal um, so it is going to burn the flux just a tiny bit more uh, than a normal solder job would uh, but that's okay because we can always clean it off and this came out to be a really clean solder job all right and once your q-tip you know starts to clean up then you're basically done cleaning the board. Now, final last thing is to just do a quick inspection on it. Uh, look down the edge and make sure that it's sitting very flush. Uh, make sure that it's not sticking out farther than these little nubs are because these little nubs help to protect it from touching and shorting out on the housing. Um, also, our thermistor is completely straight. So if we see it's completely perpendicular to the board and as well, it's completely flush. Uh, so this one looks like it's ready to go, um, so we're going to take this one back to the customer and let them install it back in the housing to uh, get their salt water chlorine conversion system back up and running. Doing a job like we just did on this power board for the swimming pool can be kind of an advanced job. However, if you do have some soldering skills, I'd recommend at least trying. Just be very careful not to short out the board by just touching the whole backside or the front side as there are powerful components like these capacitors that do store a lot of power. Uh, luckily on this one here, using a little bit of our hot air and also our iron, we were able to pull off this old thermistor and replace it with a new one. Now, like I mentioned before, everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below. Be sure to check that out and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And don't forget to comment below what you'd like to see in our future videos. I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see y'all later.